हेलो एवरीवन इन प्रीवियस क्लास वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट पेपर क्रोमाटोग्राफी एंड सेपरेशन ऑफ इमिजिबल लिक्विड्स सब्लिमेशन एंड एवोपरेशन प्रोसेस इन दिस क्लास वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द सेपरेशन ऑफ ए मिक्सर ऑफ टू मिजिबल लिक्विड्स सो इन दिस वीडियो वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द सेपरेशन ऑफ मिक्सर ऑफ टू मिजिबल लिक्विड्स Sometimes a homogeneous solution is formed by the mixing of liquids. Some liquids have the property of mixing in all proportion forming a homogeneous solution. So this is known as miscibility. Sometimes a homogeneous solution is formed by the mixing of liquids. So some liquids uh, mixing in any proportion and forming homogeneous solution. This is known as miscibility. this property is called as miscibility okay when two liquids will combine a homogeneous solution will form means um, after the combining of this two liquids in that which liquid uh, we cannot identify the two liquids by seeing with our eyes this property is known as miscibility so a liquid is said to be miscible if it is dissolved completely in another liquids okay so if a liquid completely dissolve in another liquid then we can call that property has a miscibility so uh, water and ethanol is one of the example for um, miscible liquids so water and ethanol for example are miscible because they are they mix in all proportion so water and uh, ethanol okay these two mixed in any proportion and form a Uh, miscible liquids so how can we separate this type of mixtures this type of mixtures we can um, separate by the process of distillation so uh, now we will discuss uh, how to separate the miscible liquids okay so water and ethanol is one of the example for miscible liquids like that water and ethanol a stone and water also one of the example for miscible liquids so uh, a stone and water is also miscible so Uh, how can we separate this a stone and a water now we will discuss so here this miscible liquids we can separate by the process of distillation okay this miscible liquids we can separate by the process of distillation so so with the help of this uh, uh, with the process of this distillation how can we separate the water and a stone now we will discuss okay so a what is the aim of this activity to separate two miscible liquids water and acetone by distillation okay so separate the two miscible liquids like water and acetone by the distillation process so what are the materials required to perform this activity so to perform this activity we need one stand and distillation flask thermometer condenser Uh, beaker acetone water and uh, one hold rubber cork and how can we perform this experiment now we will discuss first take a mixture of acetone and water in a distillation flask okay so first to take a mixture of acetone and water in the uh, distillation flask here round flask is there now what is that round flask distillation flask in that what we took we took acetone and uh, water and fit it with a thermometer and clamp it to stand so fit one thermometer in that and clamp it to stand here left side one stand is there now so fit uh, fit uh, clamp it to one stand next attach the condenser of the flask on the one side attach the condenser on the flask of uh, of the flask one side attach the condenser of the flask on one side and on the other side of the condenser keep a beak to collect the distillate okay so on other side of the condenser here we can see condenser now in this so one side of the condenser attach to the flask okay left side and right side uh, right side of the condenser will be there now another side of the condenser uh, down side keep one beaker to collect the distillate okay now heat the mixture slowly heat the mixture with the help of this 
burner okay now keep a close watch on the thermometer so slowly observe the thermometer so uh, the acetone vaporize and condensed in the condenser so the acetone and water mixture we took in the flask now the acetone is there now that is vaporizes and condense in the condenser and uh, the acetone can be collected in the uh, collected from the condenser outlet so the when we heat that time what happen the acetone which is in the flask that will be vaporizes and condenses in the condenser this acetone we can collected from the condenser outlet okay so beaker uh, condenser downside one beaker is there no so drop by drop from the condenser drop by drop uh, drop by drop falling in one beaker no that is nothing but that is acetone okay so from condenser drop drops like structurally there no that is nothing but condenser uh, from condenser downside outlet downside we can see drops like structure no that is nothing but a stone that is stone we can collect in the beaker and uh, water remains in the distillation flask water will be remain in the distillation flask the separation technique is used above is called distillation so this separation te technique we are using now that is nothing but is called has distillation so this distillation is used in the separation of components of mixtures containing two miscible liquids but there should be a large difference in the boiling point of two liquids okay so uh, this distillation method is used for the separation of two miscible liquids but there should be a large difference in the boiling points of that two liquids with the help of this distillation we can separate the two miscible liquids okay what is the meaning of miscible liquids if one liquid is dissolved completely in another liquid we can call that has a miscible liquids so um, by the distillation process we can separate the uh, miscible liquids so first uh, acetone and water is one of the example for miscible liquids first take the acetone and water uh, mixture in a flask okay and fit it to a and keep one thermometer in that flask and clamp it to a stand and attach the condenser of the flask at one side okay at not take one condenser attach the one end of the condenser to the flask and another side of the condenser we should keep a beaker to collect the distillate and heat the mixture slowly uh, so then what happen when we are heating that and the stone will be vaporizes and the condenses in the condenser and this stone can be collected in the collected from the condenser outlet and water will be remain in the distillation flask so um, here from the condenser outlet Uh, we can collect the acetone in the beaker and water will be remain in the flask so this separation technique is used is called as distillation so this distillation used to separate the two miscible liquids but there should be a large difference in the boiling points of two liquids what if the boiling point of the two liquids are close to each other to separate two or more miscible liquids when the difference in their boiling points is less than 25 degree centigrade then the fractional distillation process is used if the difference in boiling point is greater than 25 degree centigrade a simple distillation is used so uh, to separate the miscible liquids okay to separate two or more miscible liquids uh, if the boiling point between the two liquids is less than 25 degree centigrade uh, we can use the fractional uh, distillation method to separate that liquids uh, if the difference in boiling points is greater than 25 degrees then we can use distillation process already we discussed in previous activity that process we can use the boiling point difference is less than 25 degree centigrade then we can use fractional distillation method do you know what process of fractional distillation is the apparatus is similar to that for simple distillation 
except that a fractionating column is fitted in between the distillation flask and condenser so this apparatus is similar to similar to that for simple distillation but a fractionating column is fitted in between uh, distillation flask and uh, condenser a simple fractionating column is a tube packed with glass beads the beads provide maximum possible surface area for the vapors to cool and condense repeatedly so here in fractional distillation process uh, one some operators are there what are that uh, flask is there stand is there thermometer is there and kava uh, uh, water condenser is there uh, big um, conical flask is there okay and clamp uh, and uh, one more extra column fractionating column is there okay so this in this fractional distillation process the operators are similar to distillation process but extra one column is there um, extra one more pot is there what is that means uh, fractional fractionating column is there okay this fractionating column is fitted between the distillation flask and the condenser okay so uh, this fractionating column it is a tube it is packed with glass beads okay so these beads provide the maximum possible surface area for the vapors to cool and condenses repeatedly can you give any example where we use this technique we use this technique in separating the components of crude oil like petrol naphthalene kerosene grease etc okay so we use this technique in separating the components of crude oil that is petrol naphthalene kerosene grease etc so how can we obtain different gases from air we have learned that air is a homogeneous mixture and uh, it can be separated into its components how can we obtain different gases from air we have learned that air is a homogeneous mixture uh, can it be separated into its components so let uh, let's see the flow chart which gives the steps of this process so air is a homogeneous mixture and it can be separated into its components so this flow chart gives the steps of this process okay this flow chart diagram shows the process of obtaining gases from the air okay so air air is compressed and cooled by increasing the pressure and decreasing the temperature then we will get liquid air and uh, all over to warm up slowly in fractional distillation column then gases get separated at different heights what are that gases like oxygen argon and uh, nitrogen these are the gases separated at different heights if we want oxygen gas from air uh, we have to separate out all other gases present in the air so if we want to Uh, oxygen gas from the air then we have to separate all other gases present in the air so the air is compressed by increasing the pressure and uh, is then cooled by decreasing the temperature to get liquid air so this air is compressed by increasing the pressure and uh, it is then cooled by decreasing the uh, temperature to get the liquid air this liquid air is allowed to warm up slowly in a fractional distillation column where the gases separated at different temperature depending upon the boiling points so this diagram shows that the separation of gases from the air now we will discuss about types of pure substances so far we have studied about the mixtures Uh, substances those components can be separated by physical methods so till now we discussed uh, till uh, we discussed about the mixtures and how can we separate the components from the mixture by some physical methods we discussed so what about the substance that cannot be separated further by any of this method of separation we call this as a pure substance let us explore further about them
so till now we discussed about the mixture and how can we separate the components uh, present in the mixture by physical methods we discussed so some substance will be there from that substances uh, we cannot separate the components by any physical method so then we can call them as a pure substances we can call this as a pure substances we will discuss about that pure substances clearly in this topic can we separate the mixture of copper sulfate and aluminum now we will discuss take a concentrated solution of copper sulfate in a beaker and drop a piece of aluminum foil in it after some time you will observe a layer of copper is deposited on the aluminum foil and the solution become colorless why did this happen means here uh, we should take the concentrated solution of copper sulfate in a beaker and drop a piece of aluminum foil in that so after some time you will observe a layer of copper is deposited on the aluminum foil so and the solution is become colorless so why did this happen once you recall the activities of the chapter on metals and non metals in non metals and metals and non metals from 8th class uh, reactivity of uh, reactivity of metals topic is there no last topic okay once you recall that activity so in that also we took five beakers and in one beaker we took copper sulfate like that and we added zinc okay then what happened after some time that um, uh, the copper uh, and the zinc is displaced the copper from copper sulfate okay that activity is there no once you recall that activity so means in that activity from that activity we can prove that more reactive metal displaces the less reactive metal from its compound so like that here when we drop a aluminum foil in that copper sulfate solution uh, we know that a chemical reaction takes place among the copper ions present in the solution so here we know that a chemical reaction is takes place among the copper ions okay not ions a copper ions present in the solution with aluminum and copper metal is separated so here one type of reaction is takes place between copper ions and aluminum okay and copper metal is separated does it mean that copper sulfate is a mixture no it is not here copper cannot be Uh, separated from sulfur and oxygen by any physical process it can be separated by only by a chemical reaction so such type of substances like a copper sulfate are called as compounds so here what happen here we took copper sulfate and concentrated copper sulfate solution in one beaker and we drop a aluminum foil in that so after some time we will observe a layer of cup layer of copper is deposited on the aluminum foil and the solution become colorless so here after some time we can observe the copper layer is deposited deposited on the aluminum foil solution become colorless so here we know that a chemical reaction takes place among the copper ions present in the solution with aluminum and copper metal is separated so here one type of reaction takes place between copper ions and aluminum and the copper metal is separated so here the copper metal is separated now does it means that copper sulfate is a mixture no it is not a mixture okay here the copper cannot be separated from sulfur and oxygen by any physical process it can be separated only by the chemical reactions okay substances such as copper sulfate are called as compounds okay so here the copper is not separated by any physical methods okay so mixtures can be separated by physical methods okay pure substances cannot be separated by physical methods it can be separated by chemical method so here the copper is separated by chemical method no that's why it is called as compound what is the difference between mixtures and compounds now we will discuss okay okay now we will discuss about the difference between mixtures and compounds okay so mixtures elements or compounds just to mix together to form a mixture and no new compound is formed okay so elements are compound that just to mix together to form a mixture okay how the compounds will form 
elements react to each other and form a new substance that new substance is called as compounds here a mixture has a variable composition okay a mixture has variable composition but in compounds the composition of uh, each substance each new substance is always fixed okay the composition of each new substance is always if compounds are formed from two different elements no okay in um, fixed ratio okay atoms of um, okay different elements combined together in fixed ratio and form compounds okay so here uh, the components will be fixed any variable composition next uh, the constituents can in mixtures the constituents can be separated easily by physical methods okay in mixtures the constituents can be separated easily by physical methods in compounds the constituents can be separated only by chemical or electrochemical reactions so in compounds the constituents can be separated by chemical or electrochemical reactions and uh, in mixtures Uh, mixtures there no that mixture shows the properties of the constituent substances so mixture shows the properties of constituent substances uh, but in compounds a new substance is formed no that is totally different when we compare with starting substances okay so mix, uh, what are the difference between mixtures and compounds elements are compounds just to mix together to form a mixture okay Uh, in compounds atoms of different elements combine together and form a new substance that is called as compounds so uh, in this mixtures that uh, components are mixed you know that will be combined in any ratio but in compounds the constituent elements fixed in mm, the constituent elements combined in fixed ratio the the constituents in the mixtures can be separated by physical method the constituents in the compounds can be separated by chemical methods okay Uh, the mixture shows all shows the properties of constituent substance but the compound uh, are forming no that properties are completely different when we compare with the starting substances